Hey guys, Mike here. So I'm doing a much requested video here. It's been requested for months and finally I got the data I needed to actually do this video. And so a lot of you guys asked me about income ETFs, which is the best ETF to invest in for income. And so I'm looking at eight of them for you guys. And one of them in particular, which is a little newer, has a little spin to it, okay? A little creativity the other ones just don't have. And that might end up being the best one We'll have to take a look. You don't want to miss that. And you know me on this channel, I try to go one step further than most people instead of just reading off the perspectives of these things and showing that kind of stuff. I actually went through. And so the downtrend started in December 2022, ended in October, right? So we got nine months of a downtrend to compare to nine months of an uptrend, which is why I waited so I can get apples to apples, right? Nine and nine to actually do this video. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about it. And so please let me know what you think uh, down in the bottom of stuff. And we're going to start off with basically some of these are going to follow the cues you'll see. I got one following the Russell and then I got one following or two or three, excuse me, following the spot. OK, and so you're going to see a difference in the stock performance, the dividend performance. Keep in mind, these are monthly dividends. And then somewhere in this video, I will actually combine the up, uptrend, downtrend spreadsheet returns, give you an overall return and then. Put that versus the SPY. If you had just bought 100 shares of the SPY, which gives you quarterly dividends, which one would you have came out better in? Okay. And this is what I'm talking about. You can see right here, plain as day, this is the Q's, the SPY, and then, of course, the Russell, which is small cap. And you can see who, who got hammered during the downtrend. Well, obviously, it was the Q's. Who's had the most, biggest success in the uptrend? It's the Q's. Okay. And so you'll see that in these ETFs, how the stocks perform and everything. Okay. And if we look, we'll start off right here. So this is performance in a downtrend. If you buy these in a downtrend, okay? And understand I do have stars on JEPQ and then SPYI. JEPQ started in June. That's why it started June 2022. And then SPYI at the bottom didn't start till August 31st, okay? And so that's why in the downtrend, you're going to see these a little different. The returns might look, look better because they didn't have to ride from December all the way down, right? And so, especially SPYI, that's why I even put NA on the dividend because what's who cares about one month, right? And so, uh, you'll see more of that in the uptrend. But if you look here, you can see obviously there's your ticker, all your tickers right there, your prices, what you're going to be paying up front. And I'm basing this off 100 shares because that's a nice round number, okay? And then you can see the stock return, the price of the stock from December of 2021 which is when the downtrend started to September of 2022. And you can see these stock returns, obviously all negative, some of them much greater than others. And you can almost see the ones that follow the QQQ, obviously, or anything in, when it comes to tech, are the ones that take the biggest beating, okay? And then when you look over the dividend, you can see this is a monthly dividend. This will change every single month. What I had to do was take an average of the nine months uh, to give me the best guess here. And you can see that's the normal dividends. And you can see some pay higher than others. And it's important to know that these ETFs in particular, they sell covered calls. That's how they're generating these dividends for you. But one of them, which we'll cover later, does things a little bit different when it comes to these options. And then we go over the shares where you got the 100. This was at the end of the downtrend. So you can see all of these are down. Obviously, SPYI would not be down as much because it was only available for one month in the downtrend, okay? And so you can see JEPQ didn't start till June. So it was June, July, August, September, but it still took a beating. Why? Because it's following the QQQ, okay? And then we see the dividend returns. Obviously, I didn't have one for SPYI because I'm not going to do one month. That makes no sense. But you can see the rest of these, okay? And JEPI uh, paid out the most. And then XYLD was second, as you can see. Feel free to snapshot this. That way you can actually compare it to some of the things we're going to talk about later. And then if we move over to the uptrend, obviously you can see a difference here. This is the price that it actually started at in the uptrend, October 14th. And then you can see the stock returns. Now we're in the positives, except for RYLD, still in the negative. See? And then you got the dividends. Make sure you compare, right? Which one's paying more dividends? Is it in a downtrend or is it an uptrend? Okay, and I'm going to tell you why that is in just one second. You, I was going to tell you, you might notice the uptrend was paying more in dividends. I think on every single one of them. 
And then when you look at the shares, obviously we're finally in the positive here, except for RYLD. And then your dividend returns on the 100 shares within that same time frame of nine months. Now, why is this performing better in a downtrend versus uptrend? I'm talking about the dividend itself, the income part of it, not the stock. Cover call strategies underperform when the underlying asset experiences sustained uptrends. If the underlying asset falls, a cover call strategy can offset losses somewhat through the premium received because you get higher premiums when there's a lot more volatility going on when you're selling the cover calls. And then the one I'm waiting on, which will be the update video if we ever get there, a cover call strategy can outperform during a flat or choppy sideways market as the options sold expire worthless and the writer continually pockets a premium. And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here and the videos, think about subscribing. And so hopefully all that makes sense. Again, I'm going to combine that to show you the overall returns versus the SPY in this video as well. And understand right now what we're going to do is very quickly, I'm going to show you each one of the top 10 holdings because you're going to see and probably recognize a pattern here. And the one thing you're going to notice, I'll just go ahead and tell you, is what we call, if you're new to the channel, the Magnificent Seven. Okay, that's the one that's been basically holding up the whole stock market and is actually the reason the stock market, by a large percentage, on like the QQQ, uh, has gone up so much. If you take those seven out, the return is much, much less. Okay, but you can see these funds got in on the party and are buying them up. And pay close attention to how much of the top 10 make up the percentage of that ETF, okay? That's very important to notice. And we'll start off with Jeffy. It's all in the same order. This is the one, you know, actually really diverse, as you can see right here, top 10 holdings. Only the top 10, and the top 10 only make up 18%, right? And then if you go to QYLD, here's your normal, some of the, the seven stocks I was talking about, 60% is your top 10. And you'll notice any high range like that automatically tells you without even knowing it follows the QQQ, okay? Because that's what the QQQ does as well. Uh, X, Y, L, D, you can see, you know, some of the Magnificent Seven in there as well, same culprits. And then when we scroll down, you'll see top 10 actually make up about 31% of it. And then when we go to JetQ, you'll see this right here. It, and plus, if you see a Q, a lot of times that's following the Qs. 60%, the same culprits as you can see right here, uh, the Magnificent Seven. Our RYLD, which you can see in the spreadsheet, wasn't performing that great, right? This one, though, you see one. Like, it has the Vanguard Russell 2000 ETF. Look at that right there. And, and so, in, in Spire Medical, a lot of stocks I've never even heard of, to be totally honest with you. And you see these 10 stocks make up 35%. So it kind of lets you know why or maybe it performs slower than the others. And then you go to XYLG. You see some of the exact same stocks in the top 10 right here. And this one makes up 31%. And then when we go to NUSI, same culprits, 60% the top 10 make up. All right. And then last but not least, SPYI. Same culprits you can see, but this one also has, notice that short position down there, 2.3%. So it does hold some shorts as well, which is different than the others. And in this one, you can tell it follows the SPY, obviously that's why it's SPY. And 34% are what the top 10 make up. So those short positions make up 2.3% of that position, just FYI. And then that leads me into the total return from 1231-2021 to 623, obviously 23. Now, same kind of spreadsheet here, but then what you got is realized and unrealized stock gains. Some people will sell, some people will not sell. That's why I put that in there. Okay, and you can see overall, obviously, all these are still down, right, versus a lot of other stocks are not. Then you go into dividend returns. That's the total you add up. So within that 18 months, if you bought 100 shares of Jeppy and held them through those 18 months, you would have made about $855, right? So total return, and this is me saying I'm combining realized gains and unrealized gains in here with your dividends and the stock and everything. And minus 1%, the SPY, if you had bought 100 shares of that, would have cost you $48,000, by the way. Still, when I recorded this, it was down $4,800. So therefore, you're down uh, 8%. But I also took into account, you're down 10% actually, but I took into account the dividend, which is a quarterly dividend, okay, to offset that sum. And so you can see, 
you, you'll be down more in the SPY if you actually bought that, okay? Just keep that in mind. Plus, look at the expense ratios to the right. 0.35% just simply means for every $1,000 you invest, you're paying $3.50 in an expense fee, okay? So just keep that in mind versus SPYI at the bottom, 0.68%. So you're paying $6.80 for every $1,000 you invest, okay? So keep that in mind. I did not account for the expense ratio in these findings, okay? Nor did I calculate also the tax implications, which we'll talk about in just a minute after that because you don't want to miss that because one of these calculates things differently than the others. And so feel free to snapshot this. Obviously, you know, some people are going to buy a whole lot more than 100 shares on this right here. So just keep that in mind. Each one of these obviously are going to have a different amount of capital you're going to have to bring in this. Some of these are way more expensive than others. You can see which one performed the best, which one performed the worst overall. You can break it down by uptrend, downtrend. And it's important to understand why SPYI is different, okay? All of these sell covered calls, right? And when you look at this one, though, what happens is they're doing a combination. They're doing call spreads. With the call spread approach, the fund expects to generate a net credit through the sale of call options costing more than long out of the money call options. The fund aims to take advantage, and here's the tax implication, okay? of index options futures contracts that have lower 60-40 tax rates than listed options. Any futures contracts held at year end are treated as if it was sold at fair market value on the last business day of the tax year. 60% of capital gains and losses are taxed at the lower long-term capital gains rate and 40% at the ordinary tax rate, unlike these other ETFs. And so obviously the taxation part is just one other thing to take into account when you're trying to figure out if this is the kind of vehicle that's right for you. And as you can see, these are really meant for income uh, generation, not really stock appreciation or to make huge gain in the stock. OK, and so another thing to take into account, which you didn't see in there when it comes to total returns is if you take the money and you're reinvesting that and buying more shares of that ETF, because maybe you don't need the money right now, maybe you're looking down the road for it to be income. Obviously, that's going to change it dramatically to the upside as far as your dividend income. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, some people will need the income now and actually be literally using it to pay bills and retirement stuff. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So, you know, I hope you got something out of this, guys. Let me know. Let me get your feedback in the bottom if you like these kind of videos. I know it's a little different, but I'd like to get back into researching uh, stuff like this. And especially if you're looking for something, just kind of diversify your portfolio. You know, just keep that in mind. So if you did get anything out of it, all I ask is hit me a thumbs up right there. Maybe subscribe to the channel uh, if you like this kind of stuff and everything. And we'll see where we go from here. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.